Right, I think we've got a good number who have joined now. So um, those who are late will obviously have the opportunity to, to, to continue to uh, to join the session. But uh, I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank you, um, to thank Ben and Ali uh, for their presentation uh, and for being available for this live Q&A session. Um, for those of you who, who would like to ask questions, they ask them through the, um, the usual way through the chat function at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and we will do our best to uh, answer as many questions as, as we can in the, in, the, uh, in the time that we have. Um, so in the meantime, I have a few questions which we can keep the session off with. Um, and I'll direct the first question to, to you, Ben and Ali, if you could answer the same question, that would be great. Um, so simply, why, why did you become an oceanographer? Uh, well, okay, if I go first. So uh, my, well, my, my grandfather, my, uh, uh, cousins, uncles, they were all merchant seamen. And uh, my father was a fisherman as well. So I, I think I was destined to, to have some involvement with the sea. And I was very interested in fluid dynamics. So I went to do a degree in mathematics uh, and then came down to the, the Oceanography Centre here uh, back in 95. It was actually the Southampton Oceanography Centre then. And work paid the fees for a part time PhD. So I went on from there and um yeah did my phd and I, i've been here ever since over to ali <laughs> <laughs> thanks ben i have a slightly less um colorful family background that's directly related to oceanography uh for me it was mostly that i was really interested in climate change and environmental science growing up and i mean absolutely passionate about the ocean from a young age. I think most oceanographers will tell you that. But I, I had no idea that oceanography was a potential career path. So when I started at university, um, like Ben, uh, I studied mathematics, applied mathematics in my case. And eventually I found out through talking to academic advisors that I could apply my background in mathematics um, to study and look at research questions on ocean circulation. And basically I was hooked. From there I did a PhD in marine and atmospheric science and eventually found my way to a permanent position here at the National Oceanography Center. So that's a little bit both why I became an oceanographer and the how we became oceanographers. Great, thank you. Um, next question then is, uh, what is your favorite ocean and why, Ben? Ooh. <clears throat> that's quite tricky so i've i've done expedition or been on expeditions in indian ocean the southern the north south atlantic never not, not the arctic yet actually i've been on the edge of the arctic circle but i've never been up in the, up into the ice so my favorite i would say it's the southern ocean would be the, my favorite with those huge rolling seas <laughs> and um i remember one time i was on the back deck of a ship heading due south towards Antarctica and the big swells were coming and I was just on the heli, heli deck and just having a cup of tea and the sun was out and it was just marvellous. But the wildlife, <laughs> the wildlife down there is just is just stunning and there's so much science we, we can do in the Southern Ocean because it's so important uh, for oceanography and climate and you know generally the health of the oceans. Fantastic, so you're looking to get down there as soon as possible, are you? Next opportunity. <laughs> um, I, the last time I was down there was 2009, and um, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure whether not ne my next opportunity is because at the moment, like Ali, you know, I'm working in the mainly in the North Atlantic. Okay, thank you, uh, Ali. Same question to you. What's your favourite uh, ocean and why? Um, I think it has to be the Indian Ocean, which is pretty special for me because it formed a key part in the beginning of my career when I started, started to study monsoon dynamics, which basically affect about a third of the world's population in the countries that rim the Indian Ocean. Um, and for me, uh, aside from, I've, so I've done expeditions there, which were pretty special. Um, and I've mostly focused on tropical oceanography, but, but again, you do, you do see some pretty, you can see some pretty incredible wildlife on tropical oceanography. I remember seeing uh, for the first time, a super pod of dolphins, which is basically just thousands and thousands and thousands of dolphins, uh, you know, just around the ship in the open ocean. And for me, one of, aside of, from that, one of the key reasons for loving the Indian Ocean is that some of the scientific questions there I find particularly interesting. Um, for example, uh, the Indian Ocean is absorbing 
excess anthropogenic heat faster than any other ocean in the climate system. Um, and it accounts for about a quarter of that global ocean heat uptake. And so now with the combination of all the new technology that we have, especially available through the NOC, and these questions that are um, arriving from uh, the global oceans, taking up all that excess anthropogenic heat, makes it a really exciting time to start looking at these things and just to be an oceanographer in general. Fascinating, thank you. Um, so next question, Ben, how many expeditions have you been on? Um, I don't think I actually know anymore. Ben, Ben's an old salt. <laughs> um, perhaps in years is better. So I think I'm, I'm around two and a half to three years of my life has been spent on that, on our on research ships. I think maybe closer to three now, but it's uh, yeah quite a long time. And your favourite would be the one to the south, the uh, Southern Ocean. Um. That was, yeah, that was, that was good, actually. That was my first trip down there. That was back in 1998. Um, but I do, I have been on trips into the North Atlantic in November, December, where we, we went there for the bad weather and it was really bad. <laughs> but on reflection, it was tiring at the time. But that, again, that was a great trip just for the experience. But yeah, I think the Southern Ocean, yeah, is my favourite trip, yeah. Excellent. Ali, uh, how many expeditions have you been on? Um, I've been on five. One in the Equatorial Pacific, going from Tahiti to Hawaii. That was pretty special. One in the Northern Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal to look at monsoon dynamics. The South Atlantic from Brazil to Namibia and Cape Town, and then two in the North Atlantic. And the North Atlantic, as Ben said, is kind of where we're both focused at the moment. And why are you focused on the uh, the North Atlantic? Is that specific to your research or or areas of interest? Yes, that's right. Um, so specific to so two things. Both are uh, the areas that we're interested in. Uh, we both look at the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation. Um, so basically, that has a large focus in the subtropical and subpolar North Atlantic. But also, this is something that the NOC is known for like world experts in the AMOC and this type of science question is something that, uh, that we have in our group. So it's a really good place uh, to focus on those questions. Okay, great. Um, so moving on to uh, a few other questions coming in now. Um, ben, starting with you, if you could um, give a 15 year old yourself advice on becoming an oceanographer, what, what, what would that one be? key piece of advice be? Wow. <laughs> um, to be an oceanographer. Um, I would say in general, take the opportunities you have that are offered to you, take them and uh, don't be afraid. <laughs> you know, take those opportunities and go for it. Um, but to be an oceanographer, I think in our talk, we highlighted the, the different disciplines within oceanography. So just pursue what you're good at. You know, if you're good at mathematics, if you're good at biology and you have a passion for the seas, then, then yeah, pursue what you're good at and what you're interested in and then focus from there, from say your first degree in, within into oceanography. Yeah, so your, just, your, your core seemed to be mathematics and then the, the, the career path seemed to open up from there. Is that correct? Or? Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I was good at math. So I just focused more on maths and, uh, yeah, ended up here. <laughs> <laughs> Marvellous. Um, Ali, same question. What advice would you um, give a 15-year-old yourself? I would tell myself to get into fieldwork as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Just start looking for opportunities for fieldwork because I didn't get into fieldwork till a lot later. Uh, till basically, I mm -hmm. was ending my PhD and starting my postdoc. And, you know, it's, it's field work is so amazing and there's so many opportunities to join and there's different types of science that you can do or technical uh, or technical roles if you're more interested in that. And so, yeah, that would be my advice. Just like look for the opportunities and take them as soon as you can. Fantastic. And had you both had uh, working at NOC on your radar as a place where you wanted to end up? Ben. <laughs> um, so, 
when I first started, the actually the Institute of Oceanographic Science was in the middle of Surrey. So that was the sort of UK focus. Then we had different um, institutes around the country and they came together to focus uh, in about, well, pre-95, 93 probably it was just, you know, the focus was to build this oceanography centre in Southampton. So, um, yeah, I, I would say it was more focused towards this, the, the Institute of Oceanographic Sciences uh, and the, the SOC as it was then. Yeah, rather than I would say a university. I had my eyes on on that but specifically, yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, same question, uh, Ali. I'm so glad Ben's going for a second. Think about these things. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so the truth is no, because I I wasn't really aware of this type of career path when I was at university. But once I'd started my once I started looking into ocean or, you know, getting into oceanography, PhDs, you know, life after that, uh, it was definitely, it definitely came on my radar along with other top oceanographic institutes in the world, like Hui or Scripps. Mm. And, and critically, what, one of the, not, it was on my radar, not only because it was one of the top institutes, but because it had a lot of resources for doing a lot of different types of science. So I think most people go through a stage sort of early on in their career or their life where they're not really quite sure what they want to do for the rest of it. So you want to be at a place where you have a lot of options to maybe change your mind or try different things or get different advice. And the NOC, you know, the NOC had all those elements. Okay. Uh, well, you're both you know, very passionate about the, uh, the career paths you've taken and the work that you want to take. Um, I think if you could maybe just, just summarize what makes life special for you, whether it's a, a you know, different day or the fact that you're finding other, uh, or, or, or new findings, new research, um, you know, just, just what, what makes it special for you? Well, within oceanography, you know, I, I, I think I've never had a single job that always well, not remained the same within oceanography. I've always worked on different projects in different oceans with different goals. So it's like, um, you, you never get tired of this. You're right. You're always discovering. You're always finding out new things. And, and they, these things we find, they, they, have, they have meaning and impact because, you know, we need a healthy ocean to support uh, the fisheries. Um, you know, as we said in the talk, 50% of the air we breathe is, is from the ocean. So we need a healthy ocean. So that's our focus. Our aim is to, to, to work out how how the climate is uh, affecting our oceans and what's the impact on us and as i say you, it's a job in oceanography it's it's whatever project you're working on it's always different you know you take the same skills between different projects but you're always learning something new i, I don't think as scientists we ever really stop stop thinking or trying to work things out ever it's, you know you can walk walking along a beach and suddenly come up with a, a solution for something you know and you know so it, it is, as a career, it is very, very interesting and, and very, very rewarding. So not your average nine to five? No, no. <laughs> and, and we've talked about research ships as well. You know, the research ships, as Ali said, runs 24 hours a day. You know, you'll be working eight, an eight or even a 12 hour shift. Um, but everything, the science is, is just carrying on and you bounce our ideas off our, our ideas off each other. And uh, if fee, fee, you know, ideas for papers, for journal papers, or even projects, or questions we don't know the answers to, you can be there at four in the morning having a cup of tea, uh, just looking at the ocean, and suddenly come up with something like, "Well, I don't think people have thought about that." And yeah, take it from there. So that'll inspire you to to get some funding in and and look at yeah. that research. Marvelous, yeah. Ali, same question. What do you love about your job? Ben put it really well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the field work, uh, the real world implications of the things that we do, which, you know, are very tangible and they're things that we can see. I would add to what Ben said that I don't think a lot of people realize just how new a field oceanography is. Uh, and what that means is, you know, it hasn't been that long, you know, compared to other science like atmospheric sciences that we've had direct, measure, direct observations of the ocean and the data that we're using to now answer really big questions. So what this means, it's, it's a really exciting time 
to be a pioneer in answering, you know, these oceans, these questions on ocean circulation, because no one's done it before. You know, it's only been, you know, it's only really been the last few decades, the last 50, 100 years where, you know, this, this is really grown as a field. And so this means that there's just so many things that are unexplored and so many questions to ask and, and, and be in a good position to answer. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think we've got time for one, one last question. Um, so question to you, Ben. Um, who has been the most important person on your journey? Wow. <clears throat> I would say, thinking back to school, I would say there was a maths teacher who really sort of pulled me up by my bootstrings, if you like, and, and got me <laughs> and got me on this on the path to or made I think made the best of my passion and really focused me and, and got me working on maths problems. And mm. but it, but in but in oceanography, I remember looking at these these scientists who led these long cruises, these basin scale cruises, you know, across the islands in the Pacific and in the Atlantic. And you know, even now I go back and I used to talk to them and they, this, they, they were just, to me, it was fabulous and fascinating. You know, they would, we didn't have the Argo program in those days. So we didn't know the structure of the ocean or how the structure of the ocean changed. So every time they went out, they, they found new things, new, new, well, not necessarily new currents, but they found how things were changing. You know, and this was on five year time scales, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of good scientists out there who have, have a lot of good time for people as well. Uh, that are coming through. Excellent. Ali, who's been the most important person in your career path, would you say? Um, it's a, a lot closer to home, actually. It's It's been my mom um, pretty much through every step of the way when I didn't know, you know, a different career option was was a choice or what I could do. Um, and and I I left home at 18 and was moving country several times. So I grew up in Mexico and basically I, I went on my own to live in Canada and then I did everything on my own since then. And having my mom as a cheerleader believing in me, I think was, was what got me through. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. Well, I think we are just about there. Um, I think, uh, yeah, great, 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 uh, pool of questions there thank you for those uh and thanks again ben and ali for your time um just to make you aware we have further sessions throughout the day um and you're obviously welcome to join um any of those just simply revisit the, the website for timings and details and uh hope to see you there so uh thanks again for joining um ben ali thanks for your uh, your contribution and uh, your, your presentation and for answering all those questions um and uh we, we look forward to the next session